Hello everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to this autumnal edition of Missoula Live. Kim Anderson has the night off. So, there's a few MCAT things I'd like to call your attention to. One, if you feel you can't make it to this year's homecoming parade on Saturday, October the 14th at 10 a.m., never fear, MCAT will be live streaming the proceedings. Um, secondly, if you have or know of kids that are between the ages of 9 or 13, roughly, and they would like to continue their careers in doing stop animation, MCAT's going to start our Saturday animation drop-in program uh, Saturday, October the 7th, beginning at 1 p.m. So we'll do it probably to the holiday time. Maybe I'll try to convince Scott to do an over the Christmas holiday mini camp in Lego's animation. Um, kids seem to really enjoy it. There's four hours that you could come in between the one and five, and there's a $10 fee regardless of the time you come in. And more uh, pointedly, we need more MCAT producers, the volunteer kind that come to use the facility when we're open to the public. That's Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. To that end, we're doing a tour and training for any new MCAT producers every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, if you want to learn more, um, Scott showed you the website. It's uh, MCAT.org, or you can call us at 542-6228. Now, on to my guest, Jesse Rogers, Development Director, Historical Museum, Port Missoula. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's always fun. Well, um, the big news, right, is the, the book sale that's coming up. And the book sale is an annual event. It's a big fundraiser for the Historical Museum. And you were saying you expect to have maybe 30,000 volumes for sale at the it book It is sale. a really fun sale because these books come from all over. Throughout the year, we collect donations of books from our community. And that community is all of western Montana. We've driven as far as Polson or down to Darby and get some amazing volumes of books. And these are everything from kids' books to fiction, nonfiction, history. We have some real special books that we find in there that go into our specialty pricing section. I found a first edition signed by the author about General Miles, the frontier general out here in the 1880s. It was written by a woman who was a... Uh, she lived here in Missoula in the 1920s and wrote about him, and it's... Oh. it's I looked it up, and I couldn't even find one that had ever been signed by her. That makes a pretty unique item. <laughs> yes. And the sale includes various categories mm -hmm. like that, where the sale might have oversized books in one area, mm -hmm. art and picture books in one area, kids' books. Mm, lots of kids' books this year. And one-of-a-kind uh, books that yep. um, they may be signed editions or rare editions mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So we have a little bit of everything. Last year we had a huge sci-fi area and this year we're getting quite oh. a few of those in too. I didn't think of that. Oh like yeah, it's area. it's really a fun eclectic mix and I love going there because you can get all your Christmas shopping done at once. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and you can mail things by book rate so it's less expensive. Oh, I see. So our book sale, it starts the first week in November. That's kind okay. of our main times. And this is the 2nd through the 5th of November. And we have extended our hours a bit this year because people are, you know, coming after work or on the weekends, that kind of stuff. And it opens up on Thursday at Heritage Hall. And then it, we just run and have a really great time, and people find gems that they never thought they'd find before, or those white elephant gifts, because we got some crazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool, too. I want to make sure, too, that the people know where to go. Yes, so it and is... you said Heritage Hall, right? And right. that would have been an empty term to me only a few brief weeks ago, <laughs> but I was telling you how I was out mm -hmm. for a fundraiser for the youth homes, and um, that's where the bathrooms were. Yes. So I went in Heritage Hall. It's beautiful. It is. It's, and that really aids with the ambiance of the book sale. You're in this very old historic structure out on the Fort Missoula Compact. So it's literally right across the road from the Historical Museum. And we are a 32-acre park. We're not just one building. Right. People come walk their dogs, cross-country ski in the winter. So we have this park. And then right across the road from us is this beautiful big yellow hall that's called Heritage Hall. And it's been part of our community for 100 years. I mean, it is a beautiful building. It really is. The finish of it, the mm -hmm. hardwood floor, there's a sort of... Um, 
Greco architecture, maybe it's um, Georgian, or mm -hmm. I don't know, you probably know better than me, but it certainly has an atmosphere that's fun, open, bright. Yep, it's a wonderful space, and you know, all of our volunteers who help put this together, we just have a hoot with the space and the books, and that is also the thing I wanted to mention today is this is a community event. The books come from our community. It takes a village to put this book sale together. Right. We sort all year long to make sure these books are in their proper categories so we can set it up nicely. And then we have the big moves. So, I mean, when you're trying to move 20 or 30,000 books from point A to point B, it takes a little time, right. and we have one day to do it. And you were saying <laughs> maybe it would be nice if people would volunteer mm -hmm. to help. And, you know, volunteers, we offer free lunch. They get to peruse the books and check things out. And basically, we call them the Big Move Mondays because Monday, October 30th, is when we start the setup. And that's when we move all the books from our post headquarters, which is 20 feet from Heritage Hall. We move them across the parking lot into Heritage Hall and start setting them up in their proper locations. Right. And then, you know, that's just a day of moving and hand carting and having a good time. And everyone kind of finds their spot that they like to be in. And whether they want to be taking the books out and putting them on the table or hauling them, we need strong backs and hand carts. That's right. <laughs> now, people actually are going to go for it. What, what should they do? Should they visit on the website? Should they make a phone call and say, I'm available that day? There's a couple good ways to do it. Hit us up on Facebook. I'm always on there checking, you know, if people messages comment. And messages and stuff. Messages and stuff. It's just the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. They can also visit our website, and you can contact myself, Jesse Rogers. And you can also give us a call. My number is 258-3479. And you can find ways, basically, if you talk to any of our five staff members, they're all going to be like, oh, yes, I know of this. <laughs> they're not going to turn you away. <laughs> no, you and I usually get a note put on my desk. So any way you want to contact the museum, uh, I will find your contact. Nice. And there's also, you were telling me, there's more opportunity for people to volunteer. This one sounds like it'd be really good for uh, people that like a little bit of performance, like a little bit of history, like a little bit of dress up. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a little fun with this year's book sale in addition to all the fun we usually have. Yeah. And we would like to have historical greeters. So we're kind of going with literary characters. If you're interested in dress up, we have different shifts throughout the uh, time frame of the actual event. And people would be able to dress up as their favorite literary character or just anyone from the past. Yeah. And greet people as they come into the sale, kind of point the direction of where they can find things, and just have fun. Be Mark Twain for a day. That sounds really <laughs> great. <laughs> or and an you, hour. You know what I was thinking of is all of the people, and MCAT over the years has probably recorded over 50 different characters from stories and stories. Mm -hmm. So that, if anyone's watching and you were part of Stories and Stones, uh, here's an opportunity to trot out that character, you yes. know. I'm thinking um, Andy Smetanka did Eddie Sharp. Um, someone has done Mary Glime, mm -hmm. the whore with a heart of gold. Oh, yeah. Has done her for years and years. <laughs> I think it'd be, and and of of course your own former director wasn't he C P Higgins? He was very much C P Higgins, right. the old Dr. Bob, and he's yeah. still out there. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention as volunteers for the Historical Museum, we have options all year long, and yeah. we need volunteers. They help us, you know, keep things rolling and keep things fun out there for us as staff and volunteers. So. From the wonderful people who stay at the front desk and talk to folks from all over the world throughout the day as, you know, being front desk greeters to our tour guides from youth to adult, maintenance, just doing special projects, working in development, and our collections. We have a lot of people who, if you like research, you can talk to Nicole. Yeah. She's in collections and you can help look through our 40,000 plus objects and figure out where they came from and where they should be. Excellent. I guess we better go because Brandon's waiting in the wings with a yes. doctor's appointment. But Jesse, thank you so much. Now the sale begins Thursday, November the second. Second. Mm -hmm. So you'll definitely have to come back as you did before yes. and tell us how it went. I and definitely so will. And if you need more information, Facebook's the place to go. We're updating it daily, and we have okay. a lot of fun with keeping people in the loop of how the sale's going. Nice. 
So we'll be right back with Brandon Wrenches. He is senior curator at the Missoula Art Museum, and they have a pretty terrific lineup of uh, shows for this fall. So right after this. What a nice day to be out and about today, but I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second, let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out, come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you gotta do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins it's as easy as that. See you there. Whoa. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a player kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. -na. <laughs> uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever rolls. that roll oh, and the Donna Katz mm -hmm. Donna Katz and, and that was fine. The money he got paid well, like oh, I guess we're on. Money. You can continue yeah, that story, but I'm just going to introduce Brandon, Brandon Wrenches, senior curator at Missoula Art Museum. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so what were you telling me about these Gorilla Girls? Well, as part of the Montana Book the, Festival's the programming, we got visited by the, the Gorilla Girls, play and Donna Proof, Katz, a former Gorilla you know Girl. Uh, and she called Ma'am, a four-person play about museum. a math professor who loses his mind. This is a sexist free zone. Um, is there but he plays a math professor. No, this is a sexist free museum. So he just showed up to the theater every night and then waited to find out if he was supposed to. Exhibitions. Whoa, that's Which great. Made me very proud. Yeah, of course. So, I don't know. I don't know of any museums that kind of make it through that's that sort of spot check. Like no, <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to think of, you know, um, even an MCAT. We want to be, you know, open to all, mm -hmm. first come, first serve, totally egalitarian. No one program is more important than the other. Yeah. But when you think about it, whenever you examine your interior thoughts, you always find them wanting for justice, compassion, and equality among humanity. So. I think that we have a similar mission in that way. Yeah, yeah. that is really true. <laughs> well, expand on that. Tell folks about some of the great fall shows that are at the museum. What caught my eye was the number um, and depth and quality of shows by indigenous uh, peoples at the museum this fall. We've got three really great exhibitions for this fall, all in that category. Um, one, sadly, will be have opened by the time this goes on air, but uh, we're, we've been working with David Spear, who's been working on the, the Salish Kootenai Reservation for a long time uh, with students, high school students, and he did a great thing and took these kids to New York City and kind of exposed Whoa. them to the world of photography as he knew it. And they had a wonderful field trip and took uh, a number of really great photographs while they were there. I saw them and was just really encouraged by, by their experience and how they look at the world and how they've documented it. And so we asked David, could we show some of these photographs? And he said, let, let me put you in touch with the students. Yeah. And so these are all high school students from Two Eagle River School in Pablo. Oh, sure. And they're, many of them are no longer at the school. They're at the university. Because they graduate. Um, yeah, so it's hard to kind of keep track of them. Right. But we're having a show of these photographs from this field trip to New York City, uh, and it's starting on October 6th, and will continue through December 31st. Excellent. So that's the first one. Um, it, the, and they're the focus of First Friday in October, and I think that this goes on air after that, correct? Monday? Yeah, we'll be going Monday the 9th. Monday that's the when 9th. the show will start, a week from. So the First Friday is already this coming. It's just so quick. Well, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but we're, we're installing now a, an exhibition, a survey exhibition of Jean Quick to see Smith's work yeah. called In the Footsteps of My Ancestors. And that will be up from October 3rd all the way through March 10th of next nice. year. And that is the focus of our fifth grade art experience this year. Oh, that's great. So can you explain to people the fifth grade art experience because they don't know? Yeah, we try to invite uh, all the different schools, fifth graders from every school in Lake uh, Missoula and Ravalli County. We really yeah. focus on Missoula County, but we, we try to provide opportunities to, to students in Lake and Ravalli counties as well. And they come in and they do a hands-on art experience uh, project. They make art and they see the exhibition. So it's that combination of seeing these really compelling um, exhibitions and then being able to make art at the same time that kind of cements in their mind this wonderful experience. And We've, the museum's been doing it for years, I mean. It's 32, yeah, I guess year, year number so. 32. So. Uh, we've had a number of, of artists who've gone on to professional careers and they've come back and said, you know, when I was in fifth grade, this was yeah, the yeah. thing that really made me realize I could be an artist. So. That's pretty wild. It's a tender, wet cement-like age, isn't it? It is. You know? it I really can is. kind of look back on some fifth grade experiences. I remember yeah. them. and. Um, it, it's interesting, you know, with the, the power of both thought and emotion when you're young, you can bring to stuff. So it's a brilliant idea it really to bring amazing. fifth graders into some meaningful contact with the art world. Yeah. Whether it sticks or not, you know, you'll find out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really a, an important time and an important experience for them. And that's a, an exhibition that's organized by the Yellowstone Art Museum, but we're hosting it here and then it's going to travel nationally and it takes up our two largest galleries, so it's just a very expansive, oh, wow, yeah. wonderful, inclusive exhibition. There's going to be some talks. We were talking about MCAT's media assistance grants and yeah. how we wanted to um, to be sure to record them for people that couldn't go. Yeah. But is there t there's time for people to decide they want to go to them? Yeah, the, both of this exhibition and then an another exhibition called Our Side, curated by Wendy Redstar, that has four uh, American Indian and First Nation artists uh, from across America and Canada. Uh, she's put together these, these four women in this exhibition and it's just an amazing exhibition. Multimedia, sculpture, painting, and both Jean's exhibition and this Our Side exhibition are the focus of kind of a series of talks that we are doing called Convening Indigenous Voices. Yes. And so the, those two talks, the one with Jean, will take place on November 16th uh, at 6.30 p.m. And then the, the one with the four artists, and I've neglected to say the four artists' names, mm. but I'll tell you in a minute. The four artists uh, are going to be part of that. Um, convening Indigenous Voices Forum on December 1st and 2nd, first Friday in December, and then the following Saturday. And so uh, Wendy Redstar picked um, Elisa Harkins, Tana Setlin, Marianne Nicholson, and Tanya L Linklater. Um, so they're just these really great artists, very diverse in their approaches, but they're all examining um, colonialism, kind of this residual effect of colonialism and what that means for Indian peoples. Great. Yeah. I think they're going to be really... So did the museum um, make a commitment to showing Indigenous art, uh, First Nation art this fall? Because it seems like quite a lineup all in this vein. I think that we're just lucky. It's kind of a perfect storm, but we've, right. we've got an ongoing commitment um, to do that. And the one, one gallery that we have, the Frost Gallery, is dedicated to showing work by contemporary American Indian artists all the time. Yeah. And to have a dedicated gallery like that is, is really quite a feat, you know, to, to take that space and say, this is really important to us. We really want this uh, to advance opportunities for, for American Indian artists. And it's just kind of a perfect storm with Jean's exhibition. Jean has been so influential to the, the forming of the mission and identity of the Missoula Art Museum. Hmm. Uh, at one point she said, I will give you one print from every series that I make, um, but I want you to match that and I want you to start investing in contemporary American Indian artists. And so it was really this, this seminal gift that she made 
you know, back in the 90s that, that has helped shape our vision for what kind of museum we want to be. Yeah. And I want to point out to people that they've never been, it's really worth going. 335 North Patty, right across yeah. from the federal type building, the post office. Right next to the post office. Right. And people, you can bring a little change if you need to go on the weekday for the parking. But the museum also holds some weekend hours where the parking is free. Yep. And we also say free expression, free admission. So yeah. free admission is really uh, an important value to us. The fact that the museum isn't closed off to anyone. It's free and accessible and open to yeah. everyone. That so. is really great. Well, thanks, Joel. Yeah, Brendan, I know you got to go, but I want to thank you for taking the time. Yeah, we hope people come for the yeah. forum, but also to see the exhibitions. Exactly. All right, I know Steve Hessler is out there. He's going to talk about the Celebrate Piano Series coming up at University of Montana right after this. Missoula Community Access Television works with kids in an active learning environment where they get hands-on experience in video production. MCAT offers weekly Saturday classes that spark creativity in kids from 9 to 13 years of age. Located downtown at 500 North Higgins. MCAT Saturday Drop-Ins. Create your story. Ranchers are the stewards of Montana's great grasslands and wetlands. Ducks Unlimited works with ranchers on conservation programs to improve cattle production and wildlife habitat. Montana is the nation's third largest waterfowl producer. Ducks Unlimited promotes working lands programs that help keep ranchers on the land while improving habitat for wildlife and Montana's outdoors people. To learn more about conservation at Ducks Unlimited, visit www.ducks.org Montana. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. The director is... What's oh, we're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am back with Steve Hesla. Welcome, and thank you for taking time to yeah. be on the show. You're welcome. So is this what year of the Celebrate Piano Series? This is the sixth season of this That's Celebrate wonderful. Piano Series. Yes. And um, the Celebrate Piano Series was started... I think partly by you, right? Aren't you one of the founding visionaries, as uh, I might have said earlier? Yes, there were quite a few people involved. Uh, Chris Hanna and I worked hard to get a wonderful new grand piano at the university, and the community came forward. We had this magnificent result of $80,000 raised in 10 weeks. That's pretty amazing. And suddenly we had a new piano by putting together some university funding, and that piano, we thought, well, we have to celebrate this piano. Yeah which became, yes, of course, Celebrate Piano series. So we started... It's so successful. It's I mean. really great. It brings in wonderful artists. We, we, we were the ones who brought Anderson and Rowe to campus first, and, right. and this, we said, well, maybe they'll play with the symphony. And yeah. they are now this year, which is fabulous, and so we're already wanting to talk them into coming back on our yeah. series. So things like that are terrific. It's excellent. Yes, so I was inspired by this newsletter, which you, dear viewer, could receive by contacting... Um, is, can they call University of Montana um, yeah. Music Department? Is that all right? Sure. That's yes. 243. Or they could call the box office, and they would oh, let yeah. us know as well. 243-4518, I believe. Okay. 81, oh dear. Oh, Just four, five, two, four, three. Four five eight one, and that's the box office. Okay. And they would take name and address, I'm sure, yeah. and, and tell us to put them on a mailing list. But then they could just buy their tickets because they'd be at the box office. Yeah. After <laughs> all. After all. There's um. Very simple. There's a number of concerts in the series, mm -hmm. and it begins um, Friday and Saturday, October 20th and 21st, and it goes right through what we call the academic year. Yes. To Saturday, April 21st. Right. So what are some of the, well, pianissimo, that always seems like one of the highlights, that's, and that's the star. 
that gets everything charged up. We get five grand pianos yeah. on stage, and we have as many as 25 pianists from the community and faculty and our great students, and we have every possible combination of three people on one piano, four people on one piano. We haven't had one person on eight pianos. No, <laughs> you need an octopus. For I know. A... Yes, but anyway, that's a really great event. It's very high energy, very quick paced. Uh, Beethoven, our great mascot, comes and does theatrics <laughs> and gymnastics all over the stage. Right. And we have this year a special Saturday afternoon show. The Friday night show and the Saturday night shows are for everybody. Yeah. But we decided to include a shortened version for Saturday. Maybe there's some five and six year olds that would love to come, but they're not quite ready for a. Oh, to sit that long for yeah, the full concert. Or maybe to be up till 10 o'clock at night or yeah, something. And they that. could come Saturday afternoon. So we made a special price. Oh, and that's it's, great. It's a, yeah, we've got a little smiley face or whatever. Oh, I see, to denote that. For the little Poco Pianissimo, the little, yeah. little guys. And everybody can come, the families and whatnot. And oh, then that's in, a great idea. Yeah, that'll be fun. So we're gearing up and got all our music rolling along here. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Well, it's work, and, and uh, kids uh, really pitch in. They love doing it. Um, the students, the community, everybody's just happy to make music. It, we're, yeah. all, we're all enlivened by it. And um, are, are there some performers that are outstanding? I see, you know, some names are... Jennifer Hagee is Prince, coming in January, yeah. and Jennifer Hagee studied at Juilliard. She won every prize they have, practically, and she was the last student of a, of a teacher that I actually met um, named Adele Marcus. She was the grand dame in recent uh, later, latter 20th century years, yeah. and she was a remarkable teacher, and Jennifer studied with her, but now she's in Denver, Colorado and is coming up because she's one of our friends and she plays beautifully and so that'll be in February actually, February 11th. And then we have a duo, a Canadian duo, husband and wife team and Anne-Louise Turgeon and her husband Edward uh, form a duo and they play all over the world. So they're doing our spring uh, piano festival which is especially for our students because all of the students get to have time with them and so yeah. for Friday and Saturday the students are having lessons and oh, then that's great and then they play for a Saturday night and I wanted to mention to people you know I, I should be at more concerts than I have been but I have gone to them and the UM recital hall has wonderful acoustics don't you think it's one of the great acoustical miracles yeah. of modern times when I first came here there were three arc uh, people from Pittsburgh that got on a plane and flew to Missoula. I said, what are you doing here? Well, I'm the architect and I'm the president and I'm the director of the School of Music of Duquesne University yeah. or something. And we're studying your recital hall because it's famed for its acoustics. Yeah, isn't that something? And they did. And Do you they, think it turned out by accident, you mean? I don't know that it turned out by accident, but it's shaped kind of like a loudspeaker. It is. And it has no parallel floors or ceilings, so nothing's really d bouncing there's a few baffles we put in in recent years, and uh, the acoustics are wonderful. The seatings, there's yeah. not a bad seat in that, the house. I was about to say that. There's not a bad seat in the house. Yeah. And the proscenium is very agreeable, that wood and the, and mm -hmm. the curves and everything. Right. That if people you know, have never experienced this concert hall, they really owe it to themselves to do so. Mm -hmm. And in one of these um, concerts would be an excellent introduction to it. Right. The tickets are, are cheaper. Uh, if one buys the whole season? The season pass or the season yeah. tickets, uh, people can choose which of the Pianismo concerts they wish to go to. Um, there's a little formula for figuring all that out and then uh, they could go to all of them if they wish, but I think you choose for the package one Pianissimo and then the other two uh, later in the year's concerts. And the seating is general, so you just get there early and pick your yeah, favorite, the favorite place. seat. And really, really affordable mm -hmm. compared to other entertainments. Twenty dollars general, fifteen dollars seniors, ten dollars students. Yes, except for Pianissimo because that is our primary fundraiser for yeah. the year. We have a little higher pricing for 20, oh, I see. twenty-five for general, and then twenty for seniors. Yeah, and still ten dollars for students. And then if, if they want to go to the Poco Pianissimo, that's mm -hmm. $5 for, for the, the children. For the kids, yeah. Yeah, that's really sweet. Yeah. And then the parents are down to 15 or the adults any for age, that one. Any age adult is $15 yeah. for that one. It's a little shorter but way fun show. So 
Oh, and let's tell people again, um, to order tickets, you can call the UM Arts box office, and I'll probably be repeating this That's with John great. when he comes in. Yeah. 243 mm -hmm. There's also com. Right, and if they want the season tickets, we only do that through the uh, box office at 4581 or going directly to the, to the, box to office. the UM Arts box office because that's where people can make their choices of which oh, the se and they have to be talked yeah. through. Which Saturday? Oh do you want to yeah. go Friday night or do you want to yeah. go Saturday night? They say, well, we're going to the presidential lecture Friday night. Okay, well, then you It's want better in real time, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> to kind of get it all figured figure out. That all but out. We, we love our season ticket holders, and we love everybody coming. And we pack the place for Pianissimo. So, yes. So they should get their tickets soon. And, and I've really enjoyed seeing it on MCAT, too. MCAT's yeah. recorded a bunch of them, and um, it's really fun. We love it when Ron comes in. Yeah. And, gets the show for us. He's such so. a ninja. He's so quiet. Like know. You wouldn't even know he was in the room. I know. And there you have it. There he is doing this video. Well, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time. To come yeah, thank you for having you me. You know it. And us. once again, dear viewer, it is the Celebrate Piano series at um, University of Montana Music Recital Hall, 243-4581 for tickets. And we'll be right back with a little more university entertainment. John Kenneth DeVore is here. He's going to talk about the, uh, the offerings from the departments of theater and dance this fall right after this. Welcome, my friends, to Missoula Community Access Television, MCAT. And here, every Saturday afternoon, we're having a drop-in animation camp. And where you can do such wonderful things as do animating things of great all endeavors, like make Legos come to life. Or like this. <laughs> Just do that. It'll be amazing. Here at MCAT, 500 North Aiken, Suite 105, every Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes, you realized them. I'm Attorney General, too. So. All right, we are back with John Kenneth DeBoer. Thank you so much for coming, representing University of Montana Departments of Theater and Dance. Theater is like more your thing than the dance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but you, I can you talk about dance. You kind of know what's sure. going on with the dance season. Um, so people who have never been, um, what could you tell them to persuade them to check out, maybe for the first time ever, a university performance? Well, so we're starting this year with As You Like It, which is one of Shakespeare's most popular comedies. Um, as we were programming our season for the year, we spent a lot of time thinking about, uh, since we're an academic theater program, uh, about the kind of, of ideas that we wanted to explore. And one of the ideas that we, we sometimes shy away from is the idea of entertainment for the sake of entertainment. And so, Why not? There's As a lot You Like it. it is a lovely um, romantic comedy that has some big ideas about identity and, and gender, but it's also just really funny. Yeah. And so we, uh, we picked that one. We're, we're building a set in the Masker Theater that is, the idea is we'll be reusing it. Um, it's going to be an approximation of the Globe Theater as best we can build it in the Masker. Um, which is our flexible space. And uh, 
if this goes well, we will put that in storage out at the fort in our storage space and resurrect it from year to year and just have a more traditional playing space for our Shakespearean oh, productions. So it'd be more like a generic uh, Shakespearean set mm -hmm. that you could bring out when it's Shakespeare time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we can do it with, uh, we could use it with other classic playwrights as well and mm. classical productions or even a modern production put yeah. on a classical stage. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, so that'll be really fun. And then after that, we have our, our dance concert, Dance Up Close, which is also in the Massacre Theater. But this year, we've got a really special event going on with that, which is um, Meredith Monk's Celebration Service. Uh, Stephen Calm, the dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, was in the original production in New York City. Oh, no kidding. Now, and people may not know Meredith Monk from the so, dance world. Yeah, she is a, she's a renowned uh, modern dance choreographer, and she does a lot with classical music as well. And so this is kind of going to be a blending of the worlds of theater, music, and dance because we'll be working with the choral department in the School of Music. There will be dancers from the dance program. There are actors from the acting program, including one of our esteemed uh, senior professors, Randy Bolton, making oh, gosh, yeah. his glorious return to the stage. Wow, that's <laughs> um, great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. So that that'll be at the. UCC Church near campus. United Congregational Church. Yes. Somewhere University I'm glad, Avenue. I'm glad you knew what the acronym yeah. meant because I had to reach for it. Uh, they are our, our gracious hosts and will be performing there for one weekend in November. That's pretty wild. Yeah. That sounds really interesting. You know, sometimes people would say the, the theater is a combination, you know, of a religious act and mm -hmm. an act of law, justice, or whatever. And, then, and so there you are in a sacred space. Mm -hmm doing some theater. Yeah, and the original productions in New York City were done in ch churches. Oh, so you didn't know that. So this is, it's, in, it's intended to be kind of this sacred ritual. Yeah. Uh, and I'm excited to, to come see it. We're going to have guest artists in town who are from Meredith Monk's company who will be working with the, with the dancers and the oh, actors setting the piece on them. So that'll be really exciting. Yeah, it sounds like a happening, you know, like yeah. in the 60s. It's absolutely. Happening. Yeah, absolutely. So we're excited about that, and then after Dance Up Close has completed, we uh, head into Peter and the Starcatcher, which is our holiday show. It's a, a prequel to Peter Pan, yeah. a very contemporary and uh, uh, another light and, and frothy comedy for us to end 2017 on a high note. Yeah. Um, and it's actually, we have a relationship with the producers of the original Broadway production who are based out of uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, actually. So they're in um, the neighborhood. Yeah, they're in the neighborhood. So we, we, we scooped up the rights to that early on. We've been holding on to them for about three years, waiting Whoa. to uh, do it. And so that'll be this year. And then our spring season gets a little more uh, intellectual and uh, plays on some thematics of, of uh, current politics. We're looking at a, one play called In the Next Room or The Vibrator Play, which is a, a period piece about... Uh, well, it's, it's hard to describe the adult themes in that show without... You mentioned the word vibrate. Uh, yeah, <laughs> without delving too hard into what and we can do on cable way. access. Yeah. Uh. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a comedy. It's a contemporary piece written by uh, Sarah Rule, who's a very now playwright. Um, but she will... It is a period piece that takes place in the turn of the century, uh, around 1905, I believe, when mm. they were first using... Uh, those devices to cure hysteria in oh, women. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we move on from that to another studio production called Every Man, uh, which is based on the medieval morality plays around the seven deadly sins. That will be in the Massacre Theater. We have our annual dance concert that will be yeah. in the uh, Montana Theater. And then we wrap everything up with Green Day's American Idiot, no which kidding. is our big musical for the year. Yep. That is pretty amazing. That's yeah. really ambitious. And I know you could pull it off. But I, I just want to point out to people that um, John was the director of Angels in America. I mm. saw that. That was amazing. Well, thank you. Amazing. Thank you. I've been, I've been gnashing my teeth to get a hold of the sequel to right. Angels in America <laughs> yeah. to finally finish the story. But uh, that hasn't quite made it onto the yeah. program yet. Maybe we'll do it on the Globe so Theater this set. this is American Idiot. Mm -hmm. See, I guess I'm out of the loop. I didn't know it was made into a musical. Well, it was originally devised by Green Day as a concept album 
for a stage show when oh. they when they put it out in I think it came out in like two thousand and two two thousand and three sounds about right thereabouts because yeah. um, it was a it had a lot to do with the Bush administration at that time and it hit Broadway about ten years ago or six years ago I'm I'm spitballing yeah. now about the actual yeah. time and and Billy Joe Armstrong himself was. Uh, in the Broadway production as a replacement a couple of times playing the the, the drug dealer character Saint Jimmy but it was originally intended to be a musical they were just oh. kind of kind of like Jesus Christ Superstar and right. Chess they all came out as albums first yeah and then they found their way onto the stage Tommy oh, is another sure. example of that oh so that's pretty wild yeah. is this a cast of thousands or well, that all depends on Dr. Pamela Steele. She's our, our new faculty member in musical theater. This is her right. second year. Oh, wow. And so we'll see what she, how she ends up doing that. We are excited because one of our graduate students will be playing uh, the role of St. Jimmy in, as her final creative project. Oh, that's cool. That's one of the things that's really special about this season is that all of the plays in some capacity are serving as a final creative project for our Masters of Fine Arts students. Yeah, now that's something I guess people don't often take into account is that, you know, they're thinking of their entertainment dollar, but part of what's going on is this educational experience. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. people that are performing for them are having a very significant time on stage. Because yeah. this is like their career, their life, mm -hmm. all this energy that they put into it. And, and sometimes that, I think that extremely shows. But now, if, if people watching want to um, sign up to see any of the productions or um, receive, as I did, mm -hmm. in the mail, <laughs> this exhaustive calendar of what goes on, can they call, is it the same box office that Steve Hessler and I were discussing? It is the exact same box office. Um, and you can go to any Grizz Ticks location yeah. as well, as well as onto the web uh, to look at the Grizz Ticks. Grizz Ticks. Right. Because uh, there they'll find descriptions mm -hmm. as that kind of as the they can um, search out what speaks to them yeah, in and the our, season. Uh, our tickets in the Massacre Theater are open seating, so it's first come, first serve. But right. in the Montana Theater, which is where Peter and the Star Catcher, as well as American Idiot, will be showing, those two shows will be... Uh, Reserve seating, so right. you can pick so your seat select their right, seat. Then, right there on the website. Yeah. You know, I forgot the most important one in the Montana theater. Oh, no kidding. Uh, the Montana Rep National Tour of On Golden Pond, which Whoa. will be playing in Missoula in January and February. And it's an important production because it will be Greg Johnson's Swan Song. Swan Song, yes, <laughs> as artistic director of the Montana yeah, Rep. That, I read that. I was so pretty amazed. That's like, the big one wow. to end with, for sure. Time has gone by. Yep. It yep. does that. The end of an era is upon yeah, us. Yeah, and you've been at your job a goodly while. This is my 10th year. Shh, yeah. That's crazy. I know. But I that's know. it. It's just like time goes by here in Missoula, where life is so simple. Yeah, it and seems so slow. Like but <laughs> Well, John, thanks for taking the time to go into a little bit of it. And um, just for people at home, I would encourage you to uh, go online, you know, and, and see some of this stuff. You can, um, yeah, here's an example mm -hmm. of the, the website. There's As You Like It right in the middle. Right. And this way you can read descriptions at your own leisure mm -hmm. and then decide what might speak to you. But something to bear in mind, I think, is that you would be contributing to um, a, a number of young persons' educational experience as well Absolutely. as having a really great time yourself. Absolutely. Well, thank you. All right, sir. And thank you, dear viewer, for watching this edition of um, Missoula Live. Um, Scott's going to show you a new show that I'm doing called Out and About, wherein I visit various nonprofit, civic, educational, spiritual groups about the town. I've only gone to three places. If you can think of some place you'd like me to visit, call us at MCAT. The number is 542-6228. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for watching. Well, hello everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. Welcome to the second edition of Missoula Out and About. I'm at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center with uh, the Executive Director, Kia Lizak. Kia, thanks for having us over to your place. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Hey man, you know it. Um, Kia has uh, been putting together a fantastic array of things to do at the Zach Community Center. One of these fantastic things 
is the Monster Show. What is it about? Um, around here we call it Monster Christmas. Uh, really, its official name is the Missoula Monster Project. So this is an annual art show here at the Zach. Um, what we do is we try to capture every kindergartner in Missoula, but we don't have enough space to do them all at once. So we do three different schools each year. Um, so this year was Franklin, Chief Charlo, and Hawthorne, as you can see. So we do the entire kindergarten class. They're first graders now. They made these monsters at the end of last year. In the spring. In the spring. Oh, soon they grow up. Like, in the <laughs> yes. spring they were kindergartners. Now these kids are first graders. Now they're first graders. And so they each draw a monster. There were 175 this year. Um, and then they give their monsters some attributes. And then um, 175 adult artists signed up. We paired them each with one of the kindergarten monsters. And they each wow. did their own interpretation of the kindergarten monsters. And so the way it works is kindergartner, adult. Kindergartner, adult. Kindergartner, adult. So as you can see, there's a variety of different media and interpretations among the adult artists. And really, the Here's point, the yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of soft ones. There's paintings. There's digital art. Um, we love this show so much because it provides a couple of things. One is all of these first graders now get to have their first art show and it's a booming opening I tell you what we have more kids in this room than you know for any other art opening or probably any other art opening in Montana or there are more children here which is really fun um, and then they kind of get to see the power of art and the power of perspective and the power of creation and what what the different you know how one person can take the same idea and make something else out of it so that's really fun like this one, here was a flat one, and I see that you're kind of taking into account that the kindergartners are small, mm -hmm. and that some of them have, well, like an area for them to work on, and, and a limited palette, maybe. But then, see, the adult went wild with a three-dimensional interpretation of this one-eyed horned monster. Yes, and the kid and, and each of them have descriptions underneath. So this one, for example, says, "My monster likes to lick out of the toilet. Oh. My monster feels scary. My monster eats garbage, and my monster thinks eating out of trash cans is good." So that was the kindergartner's description. And so this artist took that idea and made this monster. It's little trash can, which you know was not represented in the original one, but was represented in the thoughts. And, and this monster is resting in their toilet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> resting in the toilet. <laughs> And this show is up all month, and about half of the monsters have sold so far. Um, they're all still for sale till the, till the end of the month. And um, all the proceeds from this show go to our scholarship program so we can bring those MCPS kids back and they can um, get involved in more art projects and programs for free. So we have an incredible um, art education program here for youth, um, offering a variety of different classes all year long. And so that's that's a great, um, something great that we can do to bring, get more kids that opportunity. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. super swell. Hello everyone, we've reconvened in the print room here at the Zach, and um, Keila Zach is going to tell us a little bit about who uses this specialized room. Yeah, so this is actually Montana's only public print shop. So this print shop is open to the public to come in and use it for whatever they so desire. Part of the Zach's mission, uh, a big part of the Zach's mission is to make art accessible to everyone. So we really like to um, concentrate on art forms that can be really accessible and reachable for the public. So we do silk screen, we do um, woodblock printing, we do all kinds of printmaking in here. Um, typically what gets used the most is a silk screen. So different schools, different organizations, a small business, um, you name it, you can draw a picture and come in here and learn how to burn a screen and put that picture on a t-shirt. So, you know, yeah, it's kind of fun. And all of the kids that are in our camps, whether it's a music camp or whether it's, um, you know, an art camp or whatever, they design and, and, and print their own t-shirts um, from the camp so they get an exper that experience. And we've had all kinds of different groups. We have a free family 
family print shop night every second Friday in conjunction with our second Friday gallery openings and we um, if you bring your own t-shirt we feature one or two designs that you can get put on that t-shirt for free uh, once a month so we like to offer that to the community and then we also you know because we have these facilities it allows us to offer some more advanced printmaking classes too so we do five and six week uh, printmaking classes for adults intro to silk screen more advanced silk screen intro to woodblock carving um, in, in color graph printing, you name it. So it's great that we can kind of bring this asset to the community. Well, we're in the clay area now. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, so this is our paint your own pottery studio. We also have um, regular old clay. We don't have wheels here. We leave that specialized training in the Clay Studio of Missoula, another great organization. So again, this is just an accessible space. You can walk in off the street. You can make a piece of art within an hour that's designed by you. Um, and so this is open when we're open. Anyone can come in and use it, uh, pick a piece off the wall, glaze it, and then we put it in our kiln, and it gets all shiny and ready to use. Um, so, uh, and then if you want to come in and just make something out of raw clay, we can do that too. We host different field trips coming in and doing uh, all kinds of different kind of basic how-tos with clay, and we do quite a few clay camps here. We also do glass fusing, so that's another thing that you can walk in and make different pendants, slumped a bottle with a design on it. We don't do stained glass, but you could make something to hang in your window. So uh, this, these go in the same kiln that we use to fire our pottery, and then it's just a way of fusing the glass together to make it pretty. But yeah, uh-huh. And then fuses. Yes, absolutely, yep. So this is like, you know, five different types of glass that all melted together to make what you're seeing here. There are so many ways to get involved in art here at the Zach and enjoy uh, the Zach. And um, one of the things is we have this free community art supply closet. It's donation based. So we take donations from community members. We need donations all the time. Um, so if you have old, old art supplies in, in your basement or in your attic that are just gathering dust, you can bring them here and we will put them to good use. So this room is open to anyone in the community anytime. They can come and grab something out of here. There's no fee, no charge, and then they can bring it in the other room in their gallery and sit and make something. We don't let people take things away. You have to make something here, but um, it's really a great space to be utilized by the whole community. And then we also ourselves utilize this space to offer about 50 free pro art projects for the community throughout the year. All right, so now we're in the Zach basement or the Zach below low as we like to call it which is home to our alternative music program amp um, it's a logo on the wall so down here we do a variety of musical education we have um, rock camp for girls rock camp for boys we do hip-hop camp radio DJ camps it's kind of our music central we also do adult education down here we have in fact tonight is the hero sound project which is a free weekly gathering of veterans to learn music um, and you know have some time to be together um, we also this is also Missoula's only all-ages music space that's supervised non-alcoholic space and we have about five shows down here a week um, shows go from eight to 11 so it's an early show um, and it's really fun so we're really happy to be able to provide all of that stuff for the community as well yeah so the Zach um, is just nine years old now we're founded in 2008 and um, it was founded by a group of artists and community members um, you know as art was getting um, cut more and more from basic school education and we wanted to make sure that there was a place for everyone to be able to go and sort of access their creative side and, and get some art education and so um, we are a nonprofit so we have a board of directors um, we have a mission our mission is to essentially to provide accessible life enriching art experiences to Missoula residents and visitors um, as well as a 
uh, extensive education facilities expertise so we do that in a number of different ways we also art offer low cost art studios for artists here so we have artists that that work in here and and mix in with our other education programs and whatnot and take part in the things we do so it being an art center it's also important to us that it is a community center so in that sense we are open we're open at 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and anyone can come in at any time we get a lot of questions about that do you have to have an appointment do you have to be a member do you have to be an artist no 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 anyone can come in anytime it's a safe space and it's welcome to everyone um, and it's Missoula's community center